I'd like to call this regular session meeting to order at 714. Roll call. Mayor Romanek. Here. Commissioner Hewitt. Here. Vice Mayor Suey. Here. Commissioner Watson. Here. Pastor Jamie Bradham, can you please come up? Before Jamie gets there, I'd like to say that we lost a very uh, close member to the City Hall. Peggy Huff passed away unexpectedly. Um, she was a clerk here for and worked for the city for 36 years. I just that, ask that we all keep her, the family of hers in our prayers and that we have a moment of silence for her. Thank you. Invocation will be given by Jamie Bradham, followed by the suit of the flag. Can you please stand? Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight and we thank you for uh, one more day. We thank you, Lord, for this commission, Father, and I pray that you would give them strength and courage and wisdom and guidance, Lord God, as they decide uh, 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 important issues for our city of Millville. Father, I, bless, I ask that you would bless our constituents, and we give you praise and honor and glory in your name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. This meeting is being conducted in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act of 1975, was advertised, posted, and made available to the public as required by statute. The municipal clerk is directed to include a statement in the minutes of this meeting. Madam Clerk, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Mayor, we had three. We had the removal of resolution number 15, approving a reduction of a performance bond for Four Seasons Phase D. Uh, apparently, there's still items on the checklist that they have to do. Item two was the addition of resolution 17, awarding a fair and open contract to all vinyl fencing LLC and an amount not to exceed $81,140. And the third was the addition of resolution number 18, appointing Drew Scarpa as an alternate three member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Thank you. Any presentations? Uh, no, Mayor. Bills. Make a motion to pay the bills. Second a motion. We have a motion to second to pay the bills. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Suey? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Motion carries. Minutes. Make a motion to approve and dispense with the reading of the following minutes and to proceed with the regular order of business, January 16, 2024 work session, January 16, 2024 regular session, January 5, 2024 closed session. Second motion. We have a motion and a second with approval of the minutes. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Suey? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Romanek? Yes. Commissioner Public Kerry. comment on agenda items only. Please limit your comments to approximately five minutes. Thank you. Debbie Malone, Geisel Drive. I'm here today to discuss resolution number two in support of Marissa Ranello. I've had the honor and the privilege to work with Marissa on the school board for three years. She not only chaired the policy and procedure committee, but also served on the curriculum, instruction, technology, and exceptional children committee, which I chaired. She is a great researcher and studies everything and from every angle. We, in fact, we have had many valuable discussions that have been quite helpful. She was a great sounding board for me to bounce thoughts off of, and, and we worked together very well, and we became friends. I know that many people wish Millville could go back to the good old days, and sadly, we know that the good old days are in our past. Now, Millville stands on the precipice of either failing, or we will take that leap into the future with positive results for our community. Many good things are starting to happen here and we need good, strong leadership. Marissa is such a leader. She is a strong leader, a thinking leader, a responsible leader that always, and I mean always, speaks the truth. She is a leader that will help you and us get to where Millville needs to be. I ask for your kind and thoughtful support of Marissa Brunella in resolution number two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Patricia Kears, 409 Peach Drive. Resolution number eight concerning the uh, purchase of the ski do jet sea, uh, ski and trailer. Um, I have just a couple of questions. 
why is there a need for river rescues and is this is something being planned that's going to necessitate this i got that we always have river, river rescues we had three last year uh for instance the sea dew uh, first off we're getting that for a hundred dollars we're buying that from the mm -hmm. county uh with the trailer we have no investment and it. it's already cleaned up and running uh, for instance, by the time we got a boat and water in the water to go get a duck hunter on opening day, duck season, we could add that sea dew. All we had to do was tow them in. It took us 20 minutes to get a boat down to get it in the water. Sea dew could have been dropped right in here, going down, got him just before the grain elevator and had him back. Uh, is it going to be used a lot? No. But there are going to be prime examples of, of times we're going to have to use it. And for $100, it was, it was just not passable. Is there going to be a cost to keep a full-time certified EMT with aquatics training? And um, will there be a cost with brown water rescues and related um, rescues certifications? EMTs will not be running on the sea dew. Okay. That will be our firefighters, which they are already trained in water rescue, high water rescue, rapid water rescue, and river rescue. Uh, EMTs are on scene to treat the patient when we get them back. Get them back okay and will there be so we already have the equipment and the event that someone is severely injured yes. on the river okay and is this going to apply to the entire morris river no. within the city limits within the city limits of the river which goes down just about to the second bend in front of the old monaco farm right is, i believe that is the cutoff for our responsibility okay thank you you're welcome and then resolution number 10 11 and 12 where, where we're giving additional money to three um, contracts. Uh, my question is, is that money coming out of the 2023 budget or the 2024? CFO is here to answer your questions, concerned. Thank you. Comes out of the 2023. Thank you. Um, Resolution um, 17 for the All Vinyl Fencing LLC. I know the, the lowest bid was thrown out because of a, um, an error. Is this the second lowest bid? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. I and prefer to say I'm just a <laughs> And then I do have one last, um, it's not a question. Can you explain to me, um, Number 17, the ordinance's first reading, 17-1, an ordinance to exceed the uh, municipal budget appropriation limits. Can somebody Again, explain that, one. please? Can you please come up to the microphone, uh, Susan? Are you, are you be covering that in your, Thank in you. your study? Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Kears, yeah, yes. she'll be covering that when she presents, if that's okay. Yeah, and I would venture to say that's on every single municipality's agenda at this time of the year. And it's also something that's very difficult to understand. And even even harder to explain. So good luck, Susan. Thank you, Mr. Kier. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kier. I give her good practice. <laughs> All right. All right, Susan. Hello and good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, and uh, citizens of Millville. My name is Charles Harris. I'm here to speak on Resolution Number Six for uh, the letter of support for Joint Ventures 420 Inc. We are a manufacturing and cultivation adult use, adult use recreational cannabis company. We are Jersey natives, and we have um, roots. I grew up in Philadelphia, lived in South Jersey, and now I live in mid-Jersey, as I like to say, but most Jerseyans tell me I live in North Jersey. So um, Agreed. With, with, <laughs> agree. with that being said, I just wanted to add a couple of the different things that we'll be bringing to the community in Millville, besides for the customary 2% tax on our revenues, which we project will be 12 million in 2025, which will produce a $240,000 tax uh, windfall for Millville, the, the bigger issue in my eyes are the ability to bring economic resources in the form of jobs here. Um, we will be employing 48 full-time employees in 2025 with an eye on going up to 65. Our employees will be part of an ESOP program and will actually own part of the company, which is rare in the cannabis space because not that I don't think there are good people who would like to do these types of things, but normally they are precluded from doing these types of things because of the 280E tax regulation. You offer your employees a benefit, 
you get no tax break for doing so like regular businesses do, we're going to offer it anyway. Um, I believe that in order for us to have a good product, a good work environment, and a good relationship with the community, we need to go above and beyond what normal businesses are asked to go with. We will be building out in second quarter and third quarter of 2024. We will start with our class two manufacturing build out first. There will be no butane. There will be nothing that's explosive on our property. It'll all be a solventless water extracted manufactured products. And then we'll be moving into cultivation in quarter two of 2025. Any other questions I would love to ask or answer at any time that it's time to do so. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Council. My name is John Gannon. I'm here for resolution number five and number four. Uh, I'm John Gannon, founder and CEO of Proper Relief. Uh, we look to locate at 1301 North 10th Street in town. We're a micro cultivator, like I said. Um, what that is is, you know, we're a small New Jersey startup. Um, you know, raised in New Jersey, uh, went K through 12 in New Jersey, and trying to start my business here in New Jersey. Uh, we've, you know, looked to locate with Tank. What we'll do is we'll cultivate to start to feed his manufacturing, uh, you know, business, um, and then he'll build out his grow as we expand our own. Uh, to start, we'll have three to six employees, and after one year of operations, we look to expand our operations, and that could include an additional six employees that come on board. Um, another thing is we're an impact zone business. I know Millville's an impact zone, so we'll look to hire 25% of our employees directly from the city. Um, so, you know, as we expand, more employees from Millville will be coming in our doors. Um, another thing Tank mentioned is 2% of our gross profits will be committed to community benefits and local, um, you know, programs wherever you guys see fit. Um, yeah, that's, that's about us. You know, we've got over 10 years cultivating experience starting in Colorado working our way to the East Coast, started in Massachusetts, we're up in Maine, uh, you know, helping groups in New York and trying to get started here in New Jersey. So, you know, our focus is on hitting all those key points for odor mitigation and, you know, local approval. So whatever you guys have questions for me, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, Rose Sias. <clears throat> 1239 Whitaker Avenue, Millville. Um, am I assuming that these two gentlemen are the uh, grow the um, the grow plant that's going to be set up for 10th Street? Yes. Okay, the one on 10th Street. Okay, so that brings us up to three grow plants in Millville. So I'd like to know if there is a limit as to how many grow plants we can have. Does the state set some limit, or is it up to uh, the commissioners? Can we have as many as we, we like? We set a limit. I think it's 21. 21. 21. 21, we 21 have 21 letters of intent, which is what they're asking for tonight. They're Correct. asking for letters of intent. Okay. Now they're going to go through the licensing process. They're not ready to come here. They're starting the process. Okay. I understand. Six months that letter of intent is good for. You see us removing them also in meetings. Right. Because they hit six months, we never hear anything. So we remove them. So you have 21 letters of intent. Doesn't mean that we're going to have 21 businesses. Nope. No, we had probably. a limit, an outside limit on 21. And I think we at one time had issued all 21 letters yep. of support. And then as uh, companies uh, uh, decide that they're not going to be in Millville, then uh, we rescind that resolution. And then we're able to uh, issue a resolution to someone else, which is what I think happened with the two uh, folks that are here tonight. Yeah. Okay, so he said that he um, will give us 2% um, tax for the revenue? Again, state law. It is the state law. Yep. Okay, so that's not retail, that is? Retail or growing. Oh, either way, it's 2%. Yep. Okay, I was not aware of that. That's very good. Okay, um, the other thing was um, on Marissa, uh, how many people did you consider for this open position? Was there several people that you considered? I myself personally spoke with four. Four, okay. Including Marissa. Okay, and do you share with us uh, her qualifications or do we have a right to know what uh, her qualifications are? 
That would be like, uh, I mean, this is just my thoughts. Uh -huh. Nothing legal or professional. Proc stop me if I'm wrong. That's what a campaign's for. This is a special seat. We need to, as I stated many times in the last meeting, we need to have five right. voting bodies up here. Right. Uh, Marissa didn't campaign. She'll be campaigning. Then okay, she so gets they have to campaign to be. In, I don't think it's fair for us. Considered. This is still an elected position we have. We're yeah. just hoping to appoint somebody so we have a voting body of five, an odd number. Okay, so she would still have to go under the qualifications of, um, of being over 18 years old and a city elected. resident. Yep. That's the qualifications to be a city commissioner. Yep. Okay, very good. All right, and the other thing was on um, the budget. It, outstanding debt was $31 million. And I wanted to know in that budget is that new sewer, um, sewer project that we're starting, is, was that included in there? No. Okay, that's an addition to that. That's a separate utility. Think of it as a separate entity. Okay, so that's it. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Tamara Davis, second in Pine Millville. Um, I'm here to discuss the appointment of Marissa Ranello as commissioner. Uh, keep in mind that I would not be up here unless I thought about it carefully and felt strongly about it. So if you could please indulge me with some uh, prepared com uh, comments. It is no doubt that a commissioner is a position of immense responsibility requiring vision integrity, patience, and a deep commitment to the municipality and its residents. I believe Ms. Ranello embodies these qualities wholeheartedly. I became very aware of her principles and values during her time on the school board. She proved to be a dedicated public servant, demonstrating her sole opposition to extremely high tax increases, her unwavering dedication to fiscal efficiency, prudent management of resources, and above all, the full understanding that her position was to prioritize education and provide a safe environment for all students to learn. Through her participation on the school's district's policy committee, Ms. Ranello continuously advocated for policy updates or rewrites that not only followed the state laws, but had a direct impact on the well-being and academic success of this community's students. This commission needs leaders who are capable and compassionate, who will listen and understand the concerns of every citizen and work to address them. Marissa Ranello is that person. She is one who will quickly learn the responsibilities of her position and how the city and her assigned department operates. Ms. Ranello will, will also make common sense decisions with conviction based on her values and principles and without influence. So please give your full support for this resolution. She will be a wonderful addition to this commission. I think she might bring um, a different perspective and a different way of thinking and um, a wonderful New York accent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing no one else, I close the public comment on agenda items, petitions and letters. Okay, uh, we have a letter, it's a motion, I just need a motion to receive and file a letter from Mayor Romanek appointing Larry Malone to serve as business community member of the UEZ Board of Directors with the term expiring April 16, 2027. Make motion. Second a motion. I have a motion and a second on petition of the letters item number one. Any comments? Yes, Mr. Malone will be an added addition to the <coughs> Board of Directors as being a successful business owner locally here in town. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Reports of Commissioners. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have missed the one today, and I had to apologize to my guys. If, you, if folks haven't seen it, the police community policing unit is making their rounds to the Wawa's in town. The next one will be next Tuesday, April 23rd. That's the North 2nd Street Wawa. That'll be out by the Walmart and Lowe's. Uh, they'll be out there from 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the morning. Come on out and meet them, ask questions. Uh, they're the ones that are working in the community and with the kids, and that's why they're out there. We'll have one more at the end of April, towards the end of April, April 26th, close together, Wade and Maine, same time. Uh, 
I need to give a big shout out to Vineland Fire Department. We had a yearly mandatory live burn drill at the county fire grounds. And just like if we have a big fire, they run here and they man our firehouse in case something else happens. They spent five hours out here the other night manning the firehouse so the residents of Millville were safe while the entire <laughs> fire department and EMS were out to fire grounds. And with that, that's all, Mayor. Do you source? Yeah, I'm uh, very good. Motion no, to I'm not. I would also <laughs> like to receive and file the police reports for the month of March of 2024. Second a motion. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to receive and file the police department reports of the month of March. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Your motion carries. Commissioner Watson. I do have the report from Streets and Roads uh, for mid-April. 150 loose leaves were collected. Um, speaking of loose leaves, the collection is finished for spring collection as of today. Residents can place brush out to the curb from now until April 30th for May collection. Um, some of the work that our guys have been doing, the road repair at 327 3rd Street is complete. The road repair on Sassafras Street between High and 2nd Street has been complete. The manhole repair at 4th and Oak was completed. River, Ro River Road and Lakeshore Drive has been graded. All storm drains at Sterling Place and Dove Drive have been cleared and rotted. Um, all, store, all storm drains at the intersection of Six and Sassafras have been cleaned and rotted. All vector, our vector is currently in the Laurel Lake area cleaning out all the storm drain basins in that area uh, that we can have access to. Um, Streets and Roads has been filling potholes as we are made aware of them. Um, as a reminder, next week is bulk waste collection. Residents have until this Friday, the 19th at 3 p.m. to schedule it, to have it picked up uh, or collected. Uh, to call that in, 856-825-7000, extension 7388. I also have a couple reminders um, and a couple things that our recycling coordinator's been working on. Uh, the tonnage report will be submitted at the end of April. Um, he asked me to remind the residents that um, residents can bring clean and dry cardboard and plastic film to 416 South 15th Street for disposal. We are open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Residents may also bring small electronics, uncontaminated oil, uncontaminated antifreeze to the 15th Street building as well. If residents have damaged carts, they can reach out to uh, Chris Finch, our recycling coordinator, extension 7612, to get them repaired or replaced um, depending on what is damaged and a recycling coach app. Um, he wants me to remind everybody to please sign up. Uh, it's a nice app, as Mary Messick always says. And I actually have a couple magnets here. If anybody wants to have the, I think it's called the QR code, getting up with the times here. Um, see me after the meeting or come up and grab them when you can. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Nice Mayor Suey. All right, first I wanted, there was some Union Lake area basement flooding, so you look at the lake level it's high it used to be a sim one simple phone call and they would open the uh, the spillways up and lower the level of the lake it's got a little more complex than that now thanks to DEP they have a dam safety bureau or something so we made a call to the DEP hotline today hopefully they will remedy that situation shortly four seasons so the phase two bond reduction so I don't know if anybody's here from four seasons or listening is not going to be improved until the lighting issue is resolved out there. So Atlantic City Electric has been involved with the developer now to try to get those issues resolved. The, the issue is the lights aren't hooked up, the street lights aren't hooked up. So they need to be hooked up. They need to complete all the work. As you heard a solicitor say before that, you know, things weren't done correctly and it results in a mess. But we're making sure that things get done correctly. So developers have to do what they're supposed to do and that's an ongoing battle between developers and engineering. Also at Four Seasons, the pond water irrigation issues and concerns from residents about that. So what we have there is we have a pond, we have geese. The geese go to the bathroom in the water. Somewhere along the line, the DEP approved the use of that water for irrigation, which has high bacteria levels. The HOA and residents have asked the city to get involved. We have met several times. It took us a couple months to figure out that the DEP actually approved it. 
So we have offered to those residents, which they could do, they could utilize city water to do their irrigation and solve that problem if they wish. We can't get involved in a dispute between the developers, the HOA, and the other residents that live there. So we try to do what we can. We've done all we can, and that's the solution we offer them if they choose to take care of that. Uh, Public Works is continuing to work on various drainage issues in the city. They're all over the place. Engineering continues to coordinate with DOT for the Route 49 bridge. You know, I like this, sub aqueous <laughs> water code. Let's just say the pipe under the rear like one said. for the sewer main. Yeah, that was a uh, Demolition of 418, 420 Smith Street is pending with the award to RICO Construction for $29,000. That's being done out of CDGB funds, I believe. The Laurel Lake Water Distribution System, we have a meeting Monday with Remington and Vernick for the distribution system for design. Laurel Lake Roads, the design work there is continuing. Uh, I don't know if any, I think you probably mentioned it, but high, the high street sidewalk improvements will, are, begin, are scheduled to begin next, next week, right, Sam? Um, it starts kind of tomorrow. 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 Yeah, tomorrow. Signed your All right, they must 17th. have wrote this for me last week, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and the third clarifier at the sewer plant for the sewer plant improvements should be ready to advertise for bidding by next week. I'm not going to re forget my report since you reminded Commissioner Hewitt, you also reminded me. So I'll make a motion yeah. to receive and file the tax collector's report for the month of March 2024. Second a motion. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the tax collector's report for the, mar mar for the month of March this year. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes. Before you speak. Go ahead. As on my last duty as director of parks and public properties, I would like to have Samantha Cruz come forward and give her report for the month. This is how this is how bad Commissioner Hewitt wanted to get rid of me. He wasn't <laughs> even going to let me come up here this evening. Um, I got camping to do. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so just a couple department highlights. Um, we did reline the uh, parking lot behind Bojo's. We had people parking uh, all over the place, which, you know, didn't help with parking situations downtown, especially with the library construction. So we were able to get out there, get that done. Um, just another simple project that uh, has caused us a lot of head headaches. Um, the soccer uh, complex has new front doors. Uh, they weren't securing, they were breaking, they were falling apart. Um, as that everyone knows, that building is coming around 10 to 12 years old, so it is time that it is going to start falling apart like everything else. So um, this was just a, a minor repair that we were able to use fund our end of the year funds last year to take care of, but we did just finally get the door in. Everything is hard to get. Um, and I know that um, Mayor attended all of them, unfortunately. Um, I was out of state for Mobile Girls Softball and American Little League, which I'm sure you're gonna go over um, in your report, so I don't wanna steal your thunder, but yes. you and I um, also attended Babe Ruth this weekend, and why I'm bringing this up is I wanna take the time um, to thank our volunteers. Like, honestly, without them, we would not have youth sports. The city of Millville does help them to the best of our abilities with the fundings that we have. But um, those men and women out there dragging fields, cutting grass, um, they're the ones I want to really thank tonight. So that's the only reason why I'm stealing your thunder a little bit, because I want them to know how much we, as the Parks Department, appreciate what they do. So um, that's a shout out to all my rec leagues. I, I really do appreciate you. Um, I did want to just go over real quick the downtown paver project. Um, I have. Um, engineering has a lot on their plate. I have done paper projects before, so I have told them I'd be more than willing to manage the project with the inspector coming behind me. So um, we are gonna start our first part of it tomorrow. It is going to be removing trees. I know people are upset about that, but unfortunately, they are hurting people really badly. We are having major lawsuits that come through the city all the time um, with people tripping and falling and getting hurt, and not just a bump of bruise, like breaking things, um, and then the one lady, I think it was related to you, damaged her head quite, quite a bit. So yep. um, starting tomorrow, um, this part of High Street, City Hall, um, which is what we call the South Block and uh, First Block of City Hall, will be shut down in the morning from 7 to 9. We have 7 to 12, that's for just things, case things happen. We will be shut down to cut those trees 
on Thursday will be shut down from um, Sassafras to Mulberry to cut down the trees that are part of that part of the project. Um, then, correct, we will actually start the real paver part of it on um, Monday. Um, that's if the supplier gets all their stuff in. Uh, Rambone has already submitted all their submittals to engineering. They've been approved. So we're very excited to get this project going. And once again, they were UEZ funding monies that we, we drew down from the state of New Jersey. So it, it's not, I mean, obviously, we're all taxpayers, so it's costing us taxes somehow. But it's not costing us municipal money. Um, and, so we, and Sam, that is just high street, not the side streets? Correct. Unfortunately, the bid came in at $700 some thousand dollars for the side streets as well. So we did... Um, with the help of um, Miguel, we broke it down so then we wouldn't have to reject the whole bid. So we had a base bid, which was high street, and then A, B, and C, which were the side streets. Um, our next phase, which we're going to call phase two, we're going to add them in and um, complete the rest of high street. Um, so I did do a um, notification via Facebook and um, uh, city website, and I also did physical notification today by letter. I went and spoke to any businesses that were open and taped a letter or put it in their mailbox so they will be aware. It has my name and contact information if they have any questions during the project. But I'm very, um, I'm very confident in the contractor. He's going to be putting planks down so businesses can still operate during the project and I'm going to be very sensitive to the parking along the way as we as we make our way down the street so at any point anyone has any questions uh please feel free to reach out to my office i'm going to skip the city events you can go on the middle recreation page for them um but i um i do want to take a minute and i i haven't been at the podium for for a very long time but um i want to thank my department <laughs> because I'm a crazy mess and they support me every single day. And I have probably about three or four of my employees that watch this meeting every single, twice a week, twice a month. And- um, you, you, you can wave for over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just appreciate you and I want, you to, I want them to know that. So this isn't to you guys, this is to my, my department, um, my men who work out in the street and Brooke in my um, office. Uh, Ed Gandy and all the guys, I, I really wouldn't be Sam Cruz. And I know a lot of people say Sam Cruz this, Sam Cruz that, but there would be no Sam Cruz without my team. So I appreciate letting me do that for my employees. And um, of course, you know, I'm available for every commissioner. And um, Commissioner Hewitt is hopefully you guys appoint a new commissioner because I am possessive and I do not like sharing. So um, hopefully I will have, I hopefully I'll have a new commissioner this evening and I'm looking forward to continue working with whoever that is. and. You know my office is always open and uh you know we've been doing well in the mayor's office too so it's been we can't say that word because you never say that in the firehouse so <laughs> thank you thank you sam thanks sam uh yes I'll, as she alluded to april 4th uh, i attended the re-grand opening of the corson park daycare um this was very uh, you know obviously I get flooded with invites and and such throughout the city to do certain things. Uh, this was a prime example of me not clicking on the entire invite. I saw Corson Park. I sat at Corson Park where there was nobody but ducks and uh, getting ready and Sam was on vacation. So I called Brooke. Brooke was like, yeah, they're here. And then I get a call from Sam and Sam was out west. They're like, no, it's the daycare. It said the daycare. Uh, so uh, they were kind. Um, it's, a, it's a new owners to the Corson Park daycare, which has been there for over 30 years. Um, uh, uh, Miss China, she's going to do a fantastic job, uh, I believe, and uh, it was a great turnout um, on April 4th, once I got to the right place. Uh, <laughs> April 6th, I threw out the first pitch at American Little League. It was very windy um, and cool. Uh, American Little League, they did a great job, other than forgiving uh, to get the baseball for me to actually throw. Uh, there was a little delay with that. Um, I lofted it. If there was a left-handed batter, I would have nailed him. Um, but uh, the, the catcher did catch it. Um, later in that afternoon, I was invited to go on 92.1 uh, with County Commissioner Doug Albrecht. We spoke for an hour uh, regarding various different topics. Uh, two people from Millville called in saying they had no clue that I was the new mayor of Millville. Um, so you know, unfortunately, there is no active covering of uh, newspapers here any more locally. Uh, so it does take time for news to travel unless you come to these meetings or you watch them on YouTube or Channel 9. Uh, so it's, I'm sure I'll be getting congratulations all throughout you know, the next month and two months saying, I thought we had somebody else. No, <laughs> not now. Uh, April 7th on that Sunday was Millville Girls Softball League. Uh, that was well attended. That was a little bit better weather, uh, bright and sunny. Uh, 
softball to me is real easy. I figured out that you just wind up once. The closer you release it to your kneecap, the straighter the ball will fly, the better they like it. You're not lofting it in the air. Um, this is from experience. Uh, as Commissioner Hewitt said earlier, uh, April 10th, the fire department had its live, annual live burn training where he gave thanks to Vineland Fire Department. I knew nothing about this. He invited me out. I showed up in shorts and a sweatshirt. And uh, yeah, there's a their training facility, the Cumberland County Fire Training Academy, um, is you know on fire. And there was every single equipment from mobile fire department there. So it made me wonder because I was looking at the engines and counting, and I was like, so who's back at the station? And he's like, Vineland. I was like, okay, ladder company too. Uh, uh, kudos and congratulate and not congratulations, but we do thank. Uh, Vine and Ladder uh, Company too. They do provide us mutual aid service, but for that day where you know the entire department is required to do this training, um, they were there, and I don't think anything happened. Nope, um, everything was clean and green, hunky dory. Um, so that was a live board. That was very neat and interesting to watch. The Melville Fire Department on their Facebook page, they did uh, post a bunch of pictures of that. Um, it's, get, it's neat to watch hands-on what our firefighters do, but in a controlled environment. You know, you're not bug you know, you're not on scene, you know, where there's lives potentially in danger. Um, it was very good to get uh, instructions from uh, Larry Fawcett, Wettstein, uh, Chief Lippincott, uh, Williams, talked to the firefighters and EMTs. They did everything exactly like if it was a real fire. And I, I got to learn a lot. And I uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Hewitt, for extending the invite. Anytime, Mayor. April 13th uh, was the Babe Ruth. Uh, opening day and first pitch. Samantha Cruz was, with, was there for that. Uh, I practiced before throwing this one. Um, I thought, you know, the 13 to 15 year olds, they had opinions and uh, they would, you know, if I spiked it in the ground um, or, you know, hit the fence behind them, uh, they, there'd be some murmurs and uh, I didn't want murmurs. Um, so I practiced with my dad a couple of days before. I'm horrible at throwing a baseball. I used to play baseball when I was a kid. I play golf now as a young adult. I practice golf. I cannot throw a baseball. I tried and uh, I threw it in there. It was a little straight, no oomph. If there was a batter, it would have hit the middle high rise. Um, but that's a little bit in the day in the life of the mayor. And uh, as, as I move on uh, today, as uh, Commissioner Hewitt announced, uh, our community policing program is meeting at Wawa. Today is Wawa's 60th anniversary. They gave out free coffee, so kind of contradict. Uh, the cops with coffee thing, but I was there this morning from about 7:45 to 9 o'clock. Uh, when I say my Wawa, because I live on the west side of town, so 624 West Main Street, right on Main and Sharp. Uh, saw a lot of people because I live out that way, and they knew me. Uh, a lot of people wanted to donate, um, which I thought was uh, good to see the public wanting to do that. And uh, obviously, it's not there for a donation. We just answer questions, talk with talk with cop, talk with the police officers that were there. Uh, Weather was very uh, warm, warm and sunny uh, early hours, uh, but uh, that was good to be at, and um, hopefully I get to attend another one. But uh, please uh, go check out um, on the Mobile Police Department's uh, Facebook page where they do have the flyer listed for all the upcoming Cops with Coffee events. Next zoning board will be at 6 p.m. on Thursday, May 2nd. Planning board will take place on Monday, May 13th at 6.30. Uh, on the fifth floor, I've previously noted about dedicated days to code enforcement. The purpose is to focus efforts to promote property maintenance throughout the city. The inspectors are working in teams of specified areas. Two days have been dedicated to this initiative so far, with in inspectors focusing on predetermined areas. Working furthermore to encompass a plan that will cover the entire area of the, of the city. Ordinance in the second reading. All right. The first item is an ordinance rescinding and repealing ordinance number 8-2020, code section 30-183.1, utility scale, principal use solar facilities in its entirety. Make motion. Second, second a motion. I have a motion in the second on the ordinance in the second reading, item number one. There is a public hearing. If anybody would like to discuss, make comment on this ordinance, please come up to the podium, state your name, let me your comments to five minutes. Seeing no one, close the public hearing. Any comments of commissioners? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Sui. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. 
Item two is an ordinance accepting the proposed conveyance from Sally Dickinson for property known as lots 1195 and 1196 in block 4160 located on the city of Millville side of Laurel Lake to the city of Millville for no consideration. Move the ordinance on second reading. Second motion. We have a motion in the second on the second reading on the item number two. There's a public comment hearing, public hearing on this. If anyone would like to state comments regarding this ordinance in second reading, please come to the podium, state your name, leave your comments in five minutes. Seeing no one. Comments of the commissioners. Yes, again, this uh, we discussed this sh shortly last meeting. Uh, this is a resident who has moved in with her family. Uh, she asked us if she could convey the property to us. All the property surrounding this lot and block is owned by the city, so that's why we're doing this. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item three is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a cross access agreement, easement agreement between the city and 416 15 Street South LLC for a portion of property identified as Block 489, Lot 4, and more commonly known as 416 South 15th Street and rescinding ordinance number 14 2024. Make motion. Second a motion. We have a motion and a second on the ordinance second reading item number three. There's a public hearing on this ordinance, the item number three. Anybody want to like to talk about this ordinance, please come to the podium, state your name. Talk no more than five minutes. See no one, close the public hearing. Comments of the commissioners. Yeah, I have one. So this is to facilitate the, the sale of our 15th Street warehouse. Uh, as I said, to facilitate the sale, the sale is not complete. The sale won't be complete until we go to closing and sign the paperwork. So any rumors to the contrary are false, and hopefully the sale will be complete by June, I believe. Progress. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Ordinances in the first reading. Okay, the first item is an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank ordinance accordance with, excuse me, in accordance with NJSA 40A 4-45.14 for calendar year 2024. Move the ordinance on first reading. Second motion. We have a motion in the second on ordinance in the first reading, item number one. Any comments? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item two is an ordinance amending city code chapter two administration article 11 shade tree commission to update the ordinance, including changes necessary to comply with new stormwater regulations. Make motion. Second a motion. We have a motion and second on ordinance first reading of item number two. Any comments? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Resolutions. Okay, item one is a resolution authorizing the introduction of the calendar year 2024 municipal budget. Move the resolution. Second motion. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? Yes, Susan, if you would please explain. So our introduced budget, it's not an adopted budget. It's basically we're going to, you're authorizing our submittal to the state of New Jersey for the review. It could be up for any changes. Um, what we're looking at right now, um, we had some good things and some negative things that happened in a budget period. Um, some of our revenues are up. Uh, sometimes uh, the New Jersey Energy Receipts Tax, Municipal Relief Fund, uh, and bank interest is increased. So that helped us in our budget that's introduced. Uh, some of the things that work against us are our pension payments are above, uh, general liability and workers' comp, animal shelter fees are up. Um, the long and short of it, our introduced budget is basically a five cent decrease. So the increase that we experienced last budget year is relatively reversed for this introduced budget. One of the other driving forces behind that, correct me if I'm wrong, we're in contract negotiations, so we had the budget a little over $600,000 for that, I believe. Yes. Um, as well as health care costs coming up again. 
That's correct. So there's a lot of moving parts in this budget. Um, also, um, our largest portion of the American Rescue Plan Act of $3 million we used in last year's budget. So we only have a little bit left that we did utilize in this budget because uh, 2024 is the end of uh, that time frame in order to um, set aside that money for particular purposes. Thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to make a comment if I can. Go ahead. So I was asked why we don't raise taxes a little bit every year so we wouldn't have to do it like our neighbor amount when we do like our neighbor municipalities. well the reason what i see in municipal government is if you have money there say we didn't need that money this year somebody's going to find a way to spend it and it's not going to be there next year anyway so i'm very reluctant to do that in other words if i have an extra five hundred thousand dollars laying around somebody in the in the government somewhere where will find a way to spend that five hundred thousand dollars I learned that lesson very well during my last term when we left an $8 million surplus. And when I returned, that surplus was wiped out. So I didn't expect to lose the election, but that was one of the bad parts of losing it. So anyway, that's all I got. So next meeting, what we'll have is a full presentation with and the, the public hearing with the auditor. So we'll be able to go line by, not necessarily line by line, but we'll be able to highlight those details that are important to, to review as part of the actual public hearing. Susan, can you explain the, uh, the ordinance uh, to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limit? Yes, yeah, so what happens is the state likes to limit how much we can increase the budget year to year, certainly, because they don't want any municipality to overtax their residents. The problem that uh, we incur is there are certain items that we have limited control over the cost. And usually those items that I like to, to really emphasize is gasoline um, usage is down. But just because we don't have enough money to pay for gasoline doesn't mean that we shouldn't be able to have our fire trucks go out and our police department to respond. The problem is when gasoline goes up, natural gas, electricity, some of those essential things that we have limited control over, that limits how much our next year budget increases could be. This cap bank allows us to have kind of a set aside for future budget years. So it gives us a little bit of flexibility that if we have a large increase in a future budget, that we don't have to cut essential services or we don't have to do layoffs just to pay a regular bill. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Roll call. Ready, Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Suey? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. All right, motion carries. Okay, item two is a resolution appointing Marissa Ranello to serve as commissioner for the city of Millville, effective April 16, 2024. Make the motion. Second the motion. We have a motion and second on resolution item number two. Any comments? Yes. Um, Marissa served on the Board of Education for three years. She was very often the only no vote for many things that uh, probably should have been many no votes. Uh, she has experience on an elected board. I think that's one of the most important things coming into this. I mean, I know some of you guys don't, but when we have the opportunity to do that, we should take advantage of it. Um, I think she's somebody that we can all work with, and I do believe she's an independent thinker. I know she's made her opinion known to me one or two times. <laughs> so I think she'll be a good addition to this board. All I can do is agree with that and uh, add to it. I have known Marissa for a while personally, uh, and it's the best fit. It's uh, what we need to do. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. And if your family wants to come up, hold the Bible. Of the United States. 
Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the state of New Jersey. Of the state of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith. And that I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. As the government's established. As the government's established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. In the state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. Of city commissioner. Of city commissioner. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to the job. Thank you. Sam, you're officially released. Yay. Jeff Fulcher. Right here. That's your right here. That's your first address. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you want to. We're on resolution item three if she wants to stay. Yep. Perfect. All right. Resolution. Resolution. Continue. Okay. So the third item is a resolution certifying that the city of Millville's hiring practices comply with the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's enforcement guidance on the consideration of arrest and conviction records and employment decisions under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Make a motion. Second a motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number three. Any comments? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Commissioner Vanello. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item four is a resolution of support for suitability of cannabis business with proper relief at block 265, lot 5, 1301 North 10th Street. Move the resolution. Oh, oops. Sorry. Go ahead. So who is that? He can have it. I'll second. I got okay. it. Okay. We have a definite motion and second on resolution <laughs> item number four. Any comments? Yes, I appreciate you guys both being here. <laughs> Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. No. Commissioner Ranello. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Motion carries. Item five is a resolution of support for suitability of cannabis business with Joint Ventures 420 Incorporated at Block 265, Lot 5, 1301 North 10th Street. Move the resolution. Second motion. I got mixed up on yeah. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number five. Any comments? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey. Yes. Commissioner Watson. No. Commissioner Ranello. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item six is a resolution extending the conditional designation of PD Millville Redeveloper LLC as redeveloper of property identified as Block 124, Lot 16.06 within the citywide rehabilitation area. Make a motion on resolution item number six. Second motion. We have a motion and second on the resolution item number six. Any comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Suey? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item seven is a resolution authorizing the submission of a strategic plan for the Millville Municipal Alliance grant to the Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse to the County of Cumberland for the period covering fiscal year 2024 in the amount of the DEDR of 14, Dieter, excuse me, is $14,305. Cash match $3,576.25. The in-kind $10,728.75. Make motion and with that I have certification as to availability of funds, matching funds for the grants in the amount of $3,576.25. Certified by our Chief Financial Officer, Susan Canonias. Second a motion. 
We have a motion and a second on resolution item number seven. Any comments? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Suey? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Vanello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item eight is a resolution authorizing the city to purchase a sea dew jet ski and trailer for $100 from the County of Cumberland to be used for water rescues on the river. Make motion. With that, I have certification of funds in the amount of $100, certified by our Chief Financial Officer, Suzanne Quinones. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number eight. Comments? Uh, yes, I think this is a welcome addition to our public safety apparatus fleet. It'll be utilized. It's better to have than not to have. Mm -hmm. um, and for $100, uh, according to Commissioner, County Commissioner Saro, he didn't even know they had a jet ski. So <laughs> yeah. uh, good on us. Good on us. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item nine is a resolution authorizing adjustments to the tax and utility records. Move the resolution. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item, not, item number nine. Any comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 10 is a resolution approving First Amendment to professional services contract for 2023 with Kavanaugh and Kavanaugh LLC for an additional amount of $4,600. Make motion and with that I have certification availability of funds in the amount of $4,600 signed by our Chief Financial Officer, Suzanne Quinones. Second a motion. Motion and a second on resolution item number 10. Any comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 11 is a resolution approving second amendment to professional services contract with Triad Associates for an additional amount of $10,000 for invoices from November and December of 2023. Make a motion on resolution item number 11. With that, I do have the certification of availability of funds. In the amount of $10,000 signed by our Chief Financial Officer, Suzanne Quinones. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number 11. Any comments? Roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 12 is a resolution approving First Amendment to professional services contract with W.E. Johnson Engineering for an additional amount of $21,550 for invoices from November and December of 2023. Move the resolution. I have certification of funds in the amount of $21,550 signed by the CFO, Susan Quinones. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number 12. Any comments? Yes, if anybody's interested either in the public or up here, I have a breakdown of what accounts that's coming out of and what, exactly what it was for. I was anticipating questions that we did not get. Okay. Good to be prepared, Vice Mayor. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Renato? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 13 is a resolution approving a professional services contract pursuant to a non-fair and open process to spatial data logic for the 2024 renewal of software services in an amount not to exceed $26,900 beginning April 1st, 2024 and ending March 31st, 2025. Move the resolution. I have certification of funds in the amount of $26,900 signed by the CFO, Susan Quinones. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number 13. Any comments? And that's software for the fifth floor for inspections. And yes, it's uh, software to help improve the fifth floor in uh, modernizing and getting on track and re remaining on track uh, with inspections, housing, um, a lot of data entry will be used with this program and training as well for it. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 14 is a resolution approving request for performance guarantee release for Regency Development Properties LLC Four Seasons Phase 2C as submitted by the city engineer in compliance with NJSA 40-55D-53 Municipal Land Use Law. Move the resolution. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number 14. Any comments? Yes, that's a separate bond than the one I was talking about earlier for work that wasn't performed. So that's a separate 
separate phase. Phase of that development. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Sui. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Commissioner Ranello. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, item 16 is a resolution awarding a non-fair and open contract between the City of Millville and Art C for an amount not to exceed $20,000 for a period of 12 months beginning April 16, 2024, ending April 15, 2025. Move the resolution. Now I have certification of funds in the amount of $20,000 certified by the CFO, Susan Quinones. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on resolution item number 16. Any comments? Yes, this is an ongoing project we did this last year we got the videos of various businesses to aid in economic development in addition we are looking to put these videos together and perhaps make it commercial as uh, I don't know if we can give all the credit to this for being effective but I can tell you that there are and I mentioned the last meeting eight new zoning permits for business on high street as well as more multiple interest from developers so whatever we're doing to get the word out is working somehow whether it's the price of our land or our smiling faces. Oh, yeah, your smiley face. <laughs> oh, you, you, you smile more than I do. <laughs> you, you, you have to cherish your cat smile, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not your pitching skills? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> not, not, not my first pitch skills. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, it's uh, Bill Horn and Art C. Uh, I, Bill's doing a great job. Uh, he was there this morning for the Cops and Coffee. If you see the picture on Facebook for the Holly City, our city's Facebook page, um, which we struggle to get growing, but I think we're over a, a thousand followers. Um, you know, compared to Vineland's Facebook page, we're, we're very, very far behind. So go like and follow the Millville, Holly, Holly City of Millville. Um, it's our official city's Facebook page, and he does excellent job at sharing businesses, highlighting businesses, highlighting projects um, for the city of Millville. Yeah, additionally, we also asked him to reach out to some of the sports leagues so that we could get video of that, because when developers come in, they want to see what we have for the kids, as well as the Holly City Development Corporation. Correct. I don't think I told them that yet. <laughs> they now know. They have now, now they been know. notified. <laughs> it's a very good work done by Bill. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Sui. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Commissioner Ranello. Abstain. Abstain. Got that. And Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. Item 17 is a resolution awarding a fair and open contract to all vinyl fencing LLC of Hamilton, New Jersey for the project known as contract to furnish and install fence at Union Lake Park in an amount not to exceed $81,140. certification of funds for that? It says for you, you put on. I know, but I don't. You don't have certification funds for that. I have it here, hold on. She, she got it. Um, CKH is you. I can't wait. One moment, please, while we find needed paperwork. <laughs> you you received it, right? Your grant, right? So I can move with it. Yeah, it was. I think you emailed it to us. I do have it in my possession. Just you you have it, so I, have I can it move it. Make it up. <laughs> Legally, no, I do have it in my email. I can. As long as we've confirmed, there you go. We've she confirmed. just certified the funds. She certified it. Thank you, Susan. Make motion with that. We have certification of funds in the amount of eighty-one thousand one hundred forty dollars. Certification by our chief financial officer, Suzanne Quinones. In person, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. Okay. Do we have a second? Do I have a second? On second. Thank you. Any comments of commissioners? Yeah. She doesn't like me to say her name, but she wrote a grant to get a large chunk of this funding, so Excellent. thank you for that. Sam. Always good work <laughs> done by Ms. Cruz. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Motion carries. Item 18 is a resolution appointing Drew J. Scarpa as an alternate three member of the Millville Zoning Board of Adjustment with the term expiring April 15, 2026. Make motion. Second motion. We have a motion and second on resolution item number 18. Any comments? Another good addition to the zoning. Board. Yes, he's a, a, another welcome addition. As you can see, we're trying to fill our uh, alternate open zoning board uh, spots. I believe if this passes, we will now have one left, uh, which is good in case anybody takes vac on vacations when there's a zoning board meeting and we have an important zoning board client. Um, we need uh, 
bodies to be there to have a quorum. And Drew is bringing over 40 years in construction industry history with electrical construction design and project management and has lived here for over 30 years. He is a great guy. Um, I look forward to seeing him on the zoning board. Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt. Yes. Vice Mayor Sui. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Commissioner Ranello. Yes. Mayor Romanek. Yes. Okay, motion carries. New business. Okay, I just need a motion to authorize the following special event on public lands applications pending approvals, and that's the Hope Day Compassion event sponsored by Millville First Assembly of God on June 8, 2024, from 12 noon to 3 p.m. in the lot between Archer, Foundry, Dock, and Arnold. Make motion on new business item number one. Second motion. We have a motion and a second on new business item number one. Any comments? Roll call. Commissioner Hewitt? Yes. Vice Mayor Sui? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ranello? Yes. Mayor Romanek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Public comment portion. We have now reached the public comment portion of our meeting. Anyone who would like to address the commission, please come to the podium, state your name, and address your concerns. Please limit your comments to approximately five minutes. Cindy Cook Val Lane. Um, I just want to make everybody aware on Wednesday the 24th, um, we will be hosting over at the Leveway the Teen Arts Festival for Cumberland and Cape May County. So we will have a lot of kids coming from all over New Jersey for this. Um, now on Friday the 12th, we had a wonderful, wonderful program at the Levoy on the 12th and the 13th. In conjunction with the Levoy and the Hands Up Silent Theater, both located here in Millville, we were, they performed Frozen 2 for the kids. Now, with that, we not only had Cumberland County children here, and I'm talking young kids, kindergarten and up with ASL requiring sign language. Okay, on the, we had over 500 school, like I said, the young school kids here. And while I understand we cannot have parking spaces for the school buses in front of the Levoy for every show where there's children. These kids had to walk in the rain from the school buses to get into the theater. I consider that a public safety hazard, especially when you have children relying on ASL to get into the theater. Now, for 12 years or 11 years, we were able to park, have four spaces when we had the school buses pull up. The last few months, we have not been allowed to do this. I find this reprehensible and a public safety threat, especially for young kids who we all know, they get excited, they run, we have to stand out there and make sure they don't accidentally go into the street. Plus you know what a wet season we've had. They've been walking in the rain to the buses. This, I think, is reprehensible. And while I find it funny that we can't have four spaces when we have shows like this, it's okay for the business next to Levoy across the street from it, High and Pine, for months, and I'm talking months, has had the sidewalk blocked, People coming down High Street on that side of the road cannot use the handicap ramp, and they've been taking up two parking spots 24-7. Something needs to be done. This is wrong on every single level, and I think anybody here with kids and teenagers will agree this is wrong. Thank you. Cindy, did you say we're school buses? Excuse me, are they school buses? So if it's school buses, can't you just park out there and turn the lights the on? The school buses came from all over, but one thing that really stood out that I didn't mention was we had 
two buses came all the way from Newark, New Jersey, from the Bruce School for the Deaf. So, Again, I, I would ask to see if you could just have them turn the lights on and open the door. I, right I'm sorry, I'm hard of hearing Perhaps myself. Perhaps you could have them just in front of the leeway, turn the lights on and open the door like they would for a bus stop. That's what they were doing, but we're not allowed to utilize those spaces anymore. Well, I don't think you would need the spaces to stop right there and open the door. Because what happened before when we tried that, it blocked all of High Street up. Well, I was told, up when I'm well, we were point. told they're not allowed to do it. You got to talk to your director of public safety on that. Okay. If you well, want all the buses lucky. to come and park out on High Street, S let the kids out and then resume. Cindy, S can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. We have talked about this, correct? Yes, and I'm just saying why I think it's wrong, especially when we've got the place across the street that has been utilizing these parking spaces and the sidewalk, not just a couple days, but for months and months and months. This is the first time you and me talk. Am I correct? Correct. We talked today. Leavoy was doing it. We talked today. This is the first time, and we have another resident here who watches the parking. Tonight is the first time. I'm not hollering at you. I'm making sure you yeah. hear me. Tonight is the first time that I have heard about the sidewalk being blocked across the street. And like I say, we I've brought it up before. Never to me. Well, I brought it up. Never to me. And we all know it's blocked. Well, we you, will take a, you can't we will take a look at it. Excuse me, Cindy. Commissioner Hewitt, this is not a discussion. If you do, would like to talk privately, I believe Cindy, Ms. Cook, has made her comments clear and concise to the Board of the Commissioners. She's addressing us, not the public. Commissioner so Hewitt, please handle it. Okay, we'll, Thank you. I'll talk with you. Cindy, I'll talk with you afterwards. Thank you, Cindy. Patricia Kears, 409 Peach Drive. On Thursday evening at the Levoy, there's going to be a show about the glass industry in Melville, as well as a um, movie on Paul Stankert, and they're going to have a panel. Um, you can buy your tickets through the Levoy. And then I have a question. Can citizens... Do citizens have an avenue to get a public question on the ballot? There's, uh, that would be by referendum. And how does that work? Well, you have to obtain a uh, significant number of uh, signatures. Based and on the last election? And there's certain things that can go on the ballot and some, some can't. Okay. But uh, you know, I can provide more information if you want yeah, to Yeah, I'll be in touch privately. with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Seeing no one else, I close the public comment. Closing comments of commissioners. Commissioner Hewitt. Nothing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor Suey. Nice to see a bunch of people come out for the first meeting, and this is actually a pretty good crowd for this meeting, too, so good to see. Commissioner Hewitt. I mean, sorry, I'm staring at you. Watching. Yep. <laughs> Much younger. Uh, <laughs> Co Commissioner Watson. Uh, if the Huff family is watching, I, I graduated with um, Mrs. Huff's son. Um, just want to send Steve. out my condolences um, to their family. So that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Ranello. I like the ring a lot. <coughs> Thank you all for having me uh, join you. And uh, I'm looking forward to rolling up my sleeves and getting down to work. Progress. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Yes, it was good to see, as Vice Mayor said, it was good to see uh, people here, people watching. We know that, you know, we're live on TV. Um, uh, it's, it's a welcoming sight uh, to see. It's good to see businesses coming, future businesses coming here and getting the support of the city behind them. Uh, all businesses are welcome. As we said, we utilize Art C and Bill Horn to prioritize that. Um, I know of some, as I should, you know, as Vice Mayor said, you know, there's uh, renewed interest in downtown, uh, downtown High Street. Um, there's also a lot of new businesses, as you can see, coming to Union Lake Crossing. I highlighted that uh, in an upcoming uh, newsletter release by the Greater Millville Chamber of Commerce. Um, there's uh, there's going to be a few that'll uh, 
hopefully come and uh, that'll shock you. That's uh, uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave it at that because I was surprised when I learned um, of the businesses that were coming. Um, we are growing. Um, people might not agree with some businesses that come here, and that's okay. Uh, Millville's 44 square miles. We need to learn to use it all, protect some area, but you know we are here and act. You know we are the Holly City. Um, uh, even though we don't have a holly farm anymore. Um, but that's a long topic to discuss. Uh, um, and we are uh, moving forward. I would like to say just to my commissioners that when it is public comment portion or they are commenting or the public is commenting on resolutions, please try not to engage in discussion. It's not discussion time. Um, have the public there to ask comments, make questions, write them down, answer them before the like for agenda questions, it's okay to answer then. Closing comments, um, you know, it's the end of the meeting. Uh, please let the uh, public have their five minutes, uh, write down what questions, and then at the closing comments of commissioners, you may feel free to answer them. Um, but I do not want a, a long, drawn out discussion um, at the end of the meeting. With that, I need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Make a motion. Second motion. We have motion to second. All